Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Rob Unscripted. This episode is a customer request, so I hope you benefit from it to the same that they did. Uh, the request was how do you customize the components or the profiles within the frame generator? It's done through the content center, so let me show you. But before I get to the content center, a little bit of groundwork that I should probably explain before we get too heavy into the editor here. So if I if I hop right into the editor and I take this WBeam for example and I want to copy it so I can make a change to it, it says, oh, you don't have a read write library configured. Please do that in the project file. So I'll do so. You need to go to the project file and then choose the configure content center libraries. And within that, you need to make sure that you have a read write library available because if you don't, you won't be able to customize any of the default libraries. We've set them by default to read only. So you have to create a read write library in order for you to customize your content center. Now we're ready to get started. I have a custom library, I can go ahead and copy it. Now making a copy of it allows me to edit it. What really, what I really want to do is I want to leave the original one alone and I want to save a copy as to create a brand new one. And this is going to be castellated beam. Now on the box, I don't have a castellated beam, but it's based upon a WBeam profile. So once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new assembly and bring in one of those members of the new castellated family. So I'll go to my content center, browse to the iBeams, and there it is, my castellated iBeams, double click on it, and I choose the member size and the terminal length. Now when I hit OK here, it's going to prompt me for where you're going to save this thing. I'll just save it in my local workspace, that's fine. Place it, and then now that I've placed that one, you can see that's not a castellated beam yet. I need to make it a castellated beam. So the first thing I want to do is I want to figure out where this thing is, is extruding from. So I just double clicked on this sketch to see what direction it's extruding from. That way, when it changes length, I've properly positioned my first uh, cut that I'm going to put into this beam. So I'm going to sketch out the profile. I'm going to draw the arc within the line, which, which many of you know how to do. If you haven't seen that before, it's a pretty cool little tip. Um, and I'll go through here and I'll place a bunch of constraints. So I'm placing tangent constraints here. Now you might be thinking, well, why didn't it pick it up automatically while I was sketching? And the reason for that, and, and, and this sometimes begins to be a, a problem uh, for many people, is, is they don't necessarily know that you've turned off uh, constraint inference. So let me show you where you can turn that back on. Right up here, I've got a little option here for constraint persistence. And once I turn that back on, now it's placing a horizontal constraint. It's placing the tangent constraint. So by default it's turned down, but every now and again when you get to clicking around, um, you can accidentally turn it off. And as you can see there, just by sketching, it automatically puts in those constraints. So a little bit of a sidebar there, but um, it, it, it's topical. I, I, I had a question about that the other day. So go ahead and place a horizontal constraint so the this cut stays on the middle of this beam no matter what size beam I choose and and now I'm starting to take shape here real quick I'm gonna place a couple dimensions nice Camtasia edit there <laughs> and I'll go ahead and cut out uh, this particular profile on my castellated beam here okay so now that I've got the profile I'm gonna use the pattern command to determine the number of features in that pattern, but I want to associate it to the overall length. So when I grab a, a different length of beam, it automatically then adjusts the number of cuts. So I'm going to go ahead and add a couple parameters here. And the first one's going to be cut spacing, and I'll set it to six inches. It could be whatever you want, but I'm just going to set it to six inches. And this next, this number of cuts, is going to be based upon the overall length divided by my cut spacing. So it's a unitless uh, number here so that it, it's actually designating a number of features based upon the overall length and my cut spacing. So I'll go in here into my model, grab the rectangular pattern, determine the feature I want to pattern, the direction I needed to go, and now I'll just reference those parameters that I put into my list parameters so that it's associative now to the overall length. Giggity, right? It's good stuff. So let's go back up to the assembly level because I need to modify the length of this. And since this was a uh, content center object, I should do so by changing the length through the uh, the dialog box here. And as I change it, 48 inches, you can see that the number 
of cuts within this beam adjusted uh, accordingly. Change it down to something that's not a, a factor of six, uh, something 20 inches, and um, the pattern feature command only takes whole numbers. So if it's a you know 3.6 or what have you in, in the calculation, it's only going to put three whole features in. So now what I need to do is I need to take this particular version of this file and I need to replace the family template with my modified part file here. So that in doing so, when I go and place my uh, object from Content Center, go to my castellated beams, grab just a completely different size and a completely different length. And what you're going to see here is, is I won't have to go make those cuts. The cuts are now part of the new family because I redefined the family properties. Pretty slick, right? So now nobody necessarily wants to bring in individual components into an assembly and manually place their constraints and so on and so forth. So that's why we have Frame Generator. By customizing this particular library through the Content Center, I now have access to that library in the Frame Generator. So I'm going to use a real quick skeletal modeling technique. Um, I know you guys have heard me talk about that quite a bit in some of my other videos. If you're not watching all the videos or not following me on Twitter, you can follow me on Twitter. You can check out all my videos uh, on youtube.com forward slash Rob Cohey. Um, we're also blogging consistently on the manufacturing community at, uh, on the Autodesk manufacturing community site. So um, constant communication if you if you want any of these, those tips. So that was a nice sidebar commercial there why I built out this cube. <laughs> now this cube is going to represent where I'm going to place these structural members that I customized for you previously. So I'll go into frame member here and as you can see within frame generator I've got ANSI, DIN, GB, ISO, JS. Those are just the ones I have loaded. There are more uh, available to you. So as I scroll down to the family I can see, oh look at that, automatic castellated beams is available for me. I pick any one of these sizes and then determine where it needs to be placed. Go over here and just let me move this out of the way. Click on a couple lines here and based upon the position of the geometry of the cube that I sketched, now I'm using that as a skeletal model for the placement of my structural castellated beams here. And if I zoom in on that, hey, sure enough, each and every one of those has the appropriate cutouts, the appropriate spacing that I want, and I'll even grab just a, another size. Just I just I don't even know which one I grabbed, but it doesn't necessarily matter. It's not the point. It's that uh, since I redefined the family um, based upon the custom uh, profile that I that I edited and published it to that uh, that library, I can now reuse that for any other component that I wish. I thought that one was pretty uh, pretty useful. Uh, so did the customer. I hope you do as well. As always. Uh, have a great day, and uh, we'll see you next time.